the share of medium and high technology goods in world trade has more than doubled to a half of world trade. Basic education remains crucial, but it is no longer enough. To compete globally, a country's workforce must include people with advanced technical training and higher education. Here is our population. In 1980, we have about 23.9 million people in South Africa, of which 3.6% uh, were Asians, 12% were colored, 20% were white. In 1996, look at the trends, look at what's happening. We have all the other races shrinking and the black people are continuing to rise without education or proper education. So you can see the kind of challenges that we have in our, in our diversity that was you know, self-created. This, this crisis was self was the one which was, you know, it was one, it's one of those which were self-created. But how many know that we have a new generation which is ready to face it? I believe that we are the people who are to face it right in the face and deal with it. And that is why we come to conferences like this, so that our minds can be delivered and be renewed. Professor Sadi at University of South Africa, what we call UNISA, has done a study, and he called it average annual increment in the population. What he has done is that he, he, he took the number of people who were coming, new people coming into the marketplace and those who were leaving the marketplace, and look at the numbers. So, you can see our challenge. Here is global population growth. Right now in Washington, they've got an agenda for us because they call us the least developed countries, LDCs. Why? Because growth is going to come not from the industrial world or countries as we know them, but it's going to come from the developing countries. That is why you must have properties in Africa. and other developing countries. Can I hear, yes? yes? What is diversity? Everyone seems to be talking about it. Businesses train on it. Politicians support it. The media promotes it. But what exactly is diversity? Is it gender? Is it race? Is it cultural background? Is it personality type? The answer is yes, but, and much more. Here are the 14 dimensions of diversity. People are impacted on, on, on the basis of their income. Their, you know, because when you have people who have different incomes, that makes them diverse, because they can afford different things. Marital status makes us diverse. Why? Because when you work with someone who, or someone work for you who have a family, and the other one is single, they, can't have, they might not have the same commitment to be traveling and doing extensive traveling than the one who is single. Military experience, religious beliefs, geographical locations, parental status, the kind of education that you receive, age, it's an area of uh, diversity. Race, ethnicity, gender, physical abilities or qualities, and this, these days, uh, sexual affection or orientation. We have to de to de now to be dealing with gays in the workplace and in the church. It's all di it's diversity. But what 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 is the main aspect of diversity? I would say it's culture. What is culture? Culture. Before its culture, it starts as an idea which creates an ideology which produced, I got this from Dr. Miles Monroe, 
a, a, a psychology which creates a philosophy. How you deal with your environments on the basis of how you think, which is based by the ideas that are implanted in you. Culture. Every culture, before it was culture, it was somebody's idea. In South Africa, we have a ritual. When somebody dies, they must kill a cow. This is the black culture now. They kill a cow. And I studied this thing to try and find out why should the death of a person mean the death of a cow? <laughs> and then I discovered that back in the days, they used to do it because they were forced to do it because they needed this to kill the cow so that they can have the skin to cover the body for burial. We still do it now, even when we have got coffins. What is this? This is culture. It's people's ideas which get stuck on us. And we live on the basis of that, even when the world which created those which required these plans doesn't exist anymore. I will preach it, Tony. <laughs> Dr. Elijah Masongani says that all human cultures are unique, valid, dynamic, and sinful. So in other words, he's saying they are, you know, each culture is unique, it's different, and it's valid. It's dynamic, and also it's sinful. So he's saying there are certain sinful things in every culture. There's no culture without a part of sin in, in it. There's no culture without some good things in it. No culture is static. All cultures must undergo change, either evolutionary or revolutionary. I wonder if you heard this. No culture is static. All cultures must undergo change, either evolutionary, meaning the change is happening at its own time, at its own pace, or revolutionary. Somebody must get in there and face it and deal with it. No one culture has a right to judge the other culture based on their cultural values or standards. It is only God's supraculture with the right to transcend all human cultures. There is no one superior culture. All cultures are equal. All human cultures consist of good things and bad things. We have to retain the good and the bad must undergo change or eradication. All of us here have been culturally programmed. We are where we are now because someone dropped us off there. All of us have been brainwashed and we need, we need our brains to be washed for success. All of us were brainwashed. What are those sources of cultural programming? Number one, ethnicity. Ethnicity knows the fact that you can all look black, but the reality is that you're still different. I mean, the 19 people that we came with from South Africa, we are so diverse, even in language, because we have got Two Zulus, <laughs> or more, we've got Shangans, we've got Vendas, we've got Sutus. So when you meet someone, you know, they are not just Zulus, all of them. <laughs> they are all different. And also, in terms of ethnicity, there are issues that we had to deal with in terms of ethnicity. Even in our own, you know, areas as just black people by ourselves. 
Why? Because my mother told me that don't marry a Shangan. They are witches. The other one is race. People of different races were told different things about other races. We were told that white people, all of them, are racist. It's a cultural program that I had to deal with. Because it's a message that I received in my programming. So when I, I meet you and you don't greet me, I think, oh, okay. Oh, it's a racist. <laughs> I'm already told. I can see these actions. White people in my country were told that black people are ignorant, they're backwards, they're lazy, and they're thieves. And they, you know, they are, we are superior than them. That's what they were told. I have run diversity workshops a number of times. I think I've, I've, my count is already over 5,000 people that I have sat with, you know, diverse groups. And the stories that I hear, what people were told at their homes about other people, it's amazing. What were we told about Indian people? We told they are crooks. <laughs> so even if an Indian come down you know, to receive Christ, <laughs> confess their sins, <laughs> in dealing with them, I still think, what is he after? What were we told about colored people? In my country, they say colored people fight, they drink a lot. So when we were told this, even when you're a manager and you're recruiting and a colored person shows up, what comes in your mind is, I'm not too sure if this guy is not gonna be drinking all weekend and Monday he won't make it to work. These are messages that we have received. The other one is organizations. You know, this will include your, your, your societies, your stock fells, your, 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 your political parties, and so forth. I have got a cousin who uh, belonged to a particular political party where they are allergic to white people. <laughs> and as I was, you know, as I was, and I, I worked with a... Uh, one of my managers was Gail Vermeulen. Dr. Miles know Gail Vermeulen. Uh, she worked at the Auditor General's office. She's the one who recruited me in there. And uh, each time she goes on holiday, because you know black people in South Africa, we never go on holiday, we just go home. <laughs> so so when, she goes, when she goes on holiday, she will leave me at the house to take care of a house, you'll give me all, you know, the keys, access, full access to the house, and I will remain in the house. So this other particular time when I remained in the, in the house, they were to, to come back in a matter of two days or so. So I wanted to make sure the house is clean and, you know, the cars are washed and everything is looking good for them to come as they are coming back uh, from holiday. And I invited my cousin brother, the one who is psychologically damaged, mentally damaged. <laughs> so, so when he came in there, he said, he said, you know, this, you said this, this is a house of a white person. I said, yes. He said, and she, they left you with all these things, the cars, you know, furniture, the whole, you know, with the keys, everything. I said, yes. He said, no, I don't believe it. There must be something. You know? So he said, he said, where do you sleep? So I showed him the, the bedroom. And uh, it happened to be the main bedroom because uh, they have these alarm systems that, they, you know, I had to use the main bedroom so that I can, when I sleep, you know, put, put on the alarm. So he said, oh, this is, you sleep in this bed? I said, yes. He said, whose sheets are this? I said, no, it's theirs. <laughs> he said, I, when they come back, they're going to bend the sheets. 
Because white people cannot, you know, mix with black people. That was from his own orientation in terms of the political party that he affiliated with. The other one is work. The work culture has a way of going everywhere with you. The other one is parents. Our parents told us a lot of messages. Do you remember when they told you that don't eat from your neighbor's house? <laughs> don't entertain strangers? Yeah. And no wonder some of us come to the Global Leadership Summit and we, we, don't, we don't mix with no one. I've heard people you know, say, hey, my, ma my, my grandmother told me this. And just when they start to tell what the grandmother said, I'm shocked to believe that they still believe what the grandmother said, who passed away. <laughs> and you're in your own realities now. I don't have time. The other one is education. Of course, you can't put together a person who have received superior, relevant education with the other one who was also only taught to use pick and shovel. These things are not going to go together. So the kind of education that you received has an impact in the way how uh, you, you react with your, with, your, with your world. It's cultural programming. And of course, the other one, the big one in the workplace, is a religion. Which is why we must go into kingdom. Because religions haven't worked. I'm going to get my, I have invited a core facilitator without your permission because I believed that the core facilitator you will approve. Okay, so can we have my core facilitator uh, on the screens, please? I'm gonna, sh I'm gonna play you a, a video. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome with me, my core facilitator, former president of the Republic of South Africa, Mr. Nelson Mandela, at the Global Leadership Summit 2010. No one is born hating another person for the color of their skin, religion, or background, hatred and intolerance have to be learned. Even in the grimmest times, I have seen glimmers of humanity which reassured me that man's goodness is a flame that can never be extinguished. Man's goodness is a flame that can never be extinguished. I feel like running it again. What are the barriers to diversity? That's not my music. <laughs> what are the barriers to diversity? Diversity itself is not a problem. It can add value to organizations. Our differences have always been there, and they are what make us unique. The problem lies in our attitude towards diversity. People who have negative attitudes towards other people People's differences often engage behaviors that are stereotypical and prejudicial. The other word that you have to deal with when you deal with diversity is the word prejudice. What is prejudice? Prejudice is actually not a word, but a, 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 a grammatical you know, construct of a prefix pre and a word judge. So when you say you are prejudiced, we're actually saying that you like to make judgment calls before you obtain information. I was, I was a manager, you know, I was never a, 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 a victim of apartheid. Only mental damage, that's what I had to deal with. But I was a manager when I was already at age 23. And uh, I remember this one Saturday, I decided to buy a car, I went to the dealership. In this dealership, they had, you know, new cars and across the road was old cars. So I went to the, to the dealership because I wanted to buy a Jetta, uh, a new Jetta at the time. So I went to this dealership, and as I was walking in, I met this guy. He was a, he was a black guy. And I said to him, I'm looking for a 
car. You know, he said to me, old cars are that side. <laughs> See, he doesn't know what, you know, he doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't know me. Right. He doesn't He's judging me on the basis that I'm coming there with my shorts on right. Right. and my T-shirt and my slippers and I'm black. He says, old cars are that side. I decided I was going to uh, teach them a lesson. Because leaders, leaders, because leaders, you know, great leaders decide to make a classroom out of every situation. <laughs> so, so, so I said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to teach these people some, uh, f some few lessons. And as I was walking in, you know, uh, the sales people didn't really care much about me. And I went, to, I opened this car, a new car, and I sat in there because I wanted to check the controls and the, the interior of, of this new car. And that guy came to me and said, you know, what, am I do what are you doing in the new car? I said, well, I'm, I'm just looking. And I'm testing. He said, yeah, you must do it quickly because my manager doesn't like people playing in the new cars. <laughs> I already decided that I was not going to do business with them. But I wanted to teach them a what? A lesson. So, cutting a long story short, when I was about to leave, this guy says, the white guy says, oh, so have you seen something that you like? I said, yes. He said, what? He said, I, I said, a jet for. And then he, he said to me, he's, he's talking. It was looking, if you were looking at it from a distance, you would have thought that I was the the salesman, and he was the client, because he's walking like this, and I'm walking, I'm walking behind him. He said, are you, are you working? I said, yes. Are you employed? Yes. He said, uh, uh, give me your ID and your payslip. You got to know that my payslips as a manager always you know, spoke a language that any salesman could understand. So when he looked at it, this time he's at his desk and he looks at my pay slip. He said, did they offer you water, tea, coffee? <laughs> huh? I've already decided I'm not going to do business with them. Cutting a long story short, I went to another dealership, bought a car. The following Saturday, I remembered my friends at the other dealership. <laughs> and I drove my new car there, no, no number plates, new. I drove in there. As I was driving in, this, this guy, this black guy saw me, and he says, uh, but you were here last week. I said, yes. He said, uh, so where did you buy your car from? I said, I got it, bought it from Babs uh, in Gazina. He said, yeah, you see, black people don't want to support other black people. <laughs> huh? So I said to him, you know, even if I wanted to support a black person, do you remember how you make it so difficult for me to buy the car? When you told me that old cars are that side. Yeah. It is prejudice. You look at people and you judge them before you have information. These are preconceived feelings or bias with a judgment. The other one is stereotype. That's when you have an experience with a person who who represent a particular group, and you take that experience and put it across all the, everybody in that group. Not all Muslims are killers. The other one is perceptions. Here I'm gonna give you a little exercise. I'm gonna pass this one. There's too much information. I've got 125 slides, I can't do all of them. Okay, but what I'm gonna do now is that I'm gonna show you uh, some pieces of a puzzle on the board. And if you see something that makes sense to you, you don't speak to your neighbor. Okay, don't cheat, please. Okay, so, so uh, when you look on the board and you see some pieces of the puzzle, if you see something which makes sense to you, all you do to, to indicate to me is to raise your hand. Okay, all right, here we go. Wonderful. 
You can see something that, that you want to explain to us, sir? You can? You can't? Okay. Okay, I'm going to go fast here. But what I have on the board, it's a, actually a word, fly. Can you see fly now because you couldn't see? You can see it now? No, I'm talking about, I'm talking about a word, fly. Okay. Oh, I heard somebody say, oh, why didn't they see it when I put it there and they know English? <laughs> this is based on your perceptions. And the reason why you can't see it is because you are used to see you know, a writing where there's black ink and a white shade. And the way it's combined there with a black background, you can't, some of you couldn't see it. Why? Because it's perceptions. You always would see what you're oriented towards. With this one, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read something on the board, and uh, it's an easy test. Okay? And I saw that you guys are fast. So it's not going to take that long like when I deal with construction workers. <laughs> okay, I'm going to start from the, from, the, from the left, okay? How many of you can see Paris in the spring? You raise your hand. Is this stuff once in a lifetime? A bird in the hand? But how many know that there's nothing like that on the board? Because we don't have Paris in the spring, we have got Paris in their, their spring. We don't have once in a lifetime, we have once in a, a lifetime. We don't have bed in the hand, we have got bed in their, their hand. <laughs> but the reason why you can't say it is because you decide to eliminate the things that you don't want to see. Perceptions. Perceptions. Oh, okay, I, I'm on zero. Is, is that correct? Okay. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop here. Thank you very much for having me, and I appreciate you. See you at the top. Thank you. Oh, my God.